on another Bexel Manager online webinar. My name is Mila Tepejovic and with my colleague Alexander Ilić, today we will introduce you with the latest reporting features of the new Bexel Manager release. The topic for today is the process of mastering BIM data using the synergy of our common data environment, desktop application and Power BI dashboards. In the following 80 minutes or so, we will introduce you with our common data environment and display the process of creating online project, publishing BIM data from desktop application to the cloud, and how to generate and edit these interactive Power BI dashboards. One of the most important and interesting integrations we achieved is reporting and publishing results of your BIM analysis and workflows directly into Power BI application. What is very important to point out here is a level of automation we achieved and how we managed to embed our model viewer into exported Power BI reports, providing you a seamless information exchange be between Bexel Manager platform into visually appealing and interactive online reports. Entire reports are automatically created using numerous out-of-the-box templates containing not just all generated data, but also including selection sets of model elements and even color-coded custom breakdowns used to select or visually separate different information. Common key project indicators and analysis such as quantity takeoffs, cost estimation, earned value analysis, clash detection reports and BIM data check reports are already a part of existing and editable templates. Hopefully by the end of today's session you'll learn how to uh, use these workflows and how this could improve and increase your efficiency and how to collaborate with other project stakeholders on a whole new level. Before we start with today's topic, for all of you first time with us, let me briefly introduce you with our company. Bexel Consulting is a software development and consulting company specialized for beaming construction and we have almost two decades of software development experience and our consulting services are used on a global level for the last 15 years. This is just a part of our clients using our products and consulting services. Our flagship product is Bexel Manager. More information about us and our software ecosystem you can find on our webpage, where you can also request a free trial version of desktop application or trial versions of our cloud-based solution, solutions such as online model viewer, Bexel FM, Bexel Docs, or Portfolio Manager. And I'm very pleased to recommend you our recently updated and improved help section, now called Help Center. And now in one place, our users can find all relevant information about our products and common workflows. Each workflow is explained and additionally supported by detailed and concise video material. And also the section for fre frequently asked questions is reorganized so navigation and searching for the right answer is much faster and more intuitive. Help Center is now a collection of the best learning materials and explanations for each tool and feature of Bexel Manager, which is carefully organized into sections and chapters so everyone can easily follow and advance from the basic options up to the advanced tools and reporting systems. Of course, for all existing users with Bexel Manager license, we still have our user area frequently updated and refreshed with the latest demo models, templates, scripts and additional materials available for free download and use. Before we start, I want to remind you that you can send your comments or questions in the chat section of the streaming platform that you're using and our colleagues will make sure to answer your questions by the end of the session. With this new approach and using an integrated and cloud-based BIM project management, our ecosystem becomes a reliable source of project information and it really becomes a single source of true, based on which all reports are produced and updated on a regular basis. These reports then can be approved by managers but the most important thing is that since they are generated from a reliable data container, information are accurate and available just in time. This can serve as a basis for effective and timely decisions. 
Using our integrated ecosystem, decision makers and clients on the project can finally feel like captains in common center, exploring and tracking all relevant information using interactive dashboards. Instead of that, currently, project managers usually feel like detectives or researchers trying to figure out who created information, where and when specific information are created, and if these produced information are accurate. In this ecosystem, each revision of published information is saved, so the history is preserved, and all project attributes and properties are available without any loss. And on top of that, during the publishing process, a user can even specify how to send BIM data to the cloud uh, as they originally created or even segregated into smaller pieces in case that you don't want, even want to expose entire project but just its parts to different project stakeholders. Results of project analysis are linked to these previously exported BIM data and using customizable Power BI reports we could present different information to different project participants in a meaningful manner. From a personal experience, when results of performance analysis are organized into clear information and also visually presented, it is always the best way to introduce it to design team, but also to introduce it to the client or any other project stakeholder. Today, as mentioned, we will go through the reporting part of the project management process and we'll explore and explain the process itself and you'll be able to see the achieved level of automation in producing these reports. We'll try to focus more on reporting, but we'll also cover some basic steps on report customization. So let's start from the beginning. For all of you new to our common data environment, to create an online project, we need to log in to our cloud application first. At the moment, based on the initial system setup, you could log in in either to Bexel CD hosted on a European server or to Bexel CD US hosted in the United States. Uh, once we log in with the assigned credentials and access rights provided by the account manager after obtaining these CDI licenses, based on your access rights, you'll be able to see all projects in which your account is assigned or projects that you are administrating. In this example, I have an access to some of the projects or some sample projects created for educational purposes. Using create new project button, we can create a new CD project and provide its name and description. This will be a very interesting sample project that I'm currently creating and later on my colleague Alexander will present it to you. So for now, I will include Model Viewer and Bexel Docs as services available in this project. Once the project is created, the project admin needs to assign project participants. So I will add Alexander as another user simply by typing in his name. The system will find a user with respect to Bexel Manager CD license that can be added to the project. Here we could change user role if needed and also using available options on a project page we can show and list more projects to which we have access. Similarly filters for project filtering are available in each of these com columns with project information. This way we can choose and organize visible projects differently. As you may see I have access to all these projects and for the first example I will use this Bexel sample project created by my colleague last year. The project already contains eight published revisions. The first use case will be related to clash detection beam analysis. As you all know, the coordination and collaboration process of all project trades is extremely important, especially in the early stages of a project to eliminate risks and additional costs later. Therefore, performing regular clash detection analysis is extremely valuable, and this process map explains briefly the automated process using Bexel Manager. In the following minutes, I'll focus just on the reporting part and how the results of performed analysis can be generated as an interactive Power BI dashboard. In this sample project available with the installation of Bexel Manager, we have already executed an automated clash detection process and you may see the results available in the desktop application. The steps to publish results of the entire project 
as an updated version are the following. Go to the main toolbar and select Bexel Common Data Environment Publish. And in this window, we can choose to publish the model and beam information to CD as a new version or just to update an existing version to the cloud by exchanging selection sets and custom breakdowns. In this case, I will choose to publish a new version and the system will identify existing cloud project by its name. Also, uh, we can choose from the list if we want to manually specify the project on a cloud. A version name can be changed, but the system will automatically add a prefix to each version in case you provided already existing name. In the next window, we enable the very useful ability to choose what 3D elements you want to publish and also how these published 3D elements will be organized or segregated on cloud by originally used model sources or if you want to override it and group your elements by categories or even by custom-made selection set groups. In the next window, we can also choose if we want to have published and available these selection sets from the model in our cloud version and also if we want to publish custom breakdowns from existing project. I will export all, but users have the ability to choose if they like. In the upcoming release, we will also include the option to even choose what properties you want to publish. Currently, all existing properties from Bexel Manager project will also be uploaded to the cloud. And once the new updated project version is published to cloud uh, application, the, the notification email will be sent to all users assigned to the project so everyone can be timely informed about the latest changes. So this is email. And even using this link from the email, we can instantly open the latest or the last project version and explore the project in Online Model Viewer. All available services on this project are visible as a separate tabs in the window. And to show the model, we need to load the published model sources. This option is not automated purposely since in case that you work with a large and complex project, uh, but you use some common mobile devices or slower hardware, you can manually choose sources to load and in that way reduce the system or hardware load. One of the news in the latest release is possibility to use custom breakdowns in the model viewer and this way the elements will be color coded according to relevant beam information in the same way and using the same colors as you originally created in the desktop application. This allows you additional level of flexibility to explore and visualize project information. Once we have the latest project available on Common Data Environment, we can then publish different results into Power BI reports. In this case, from the list of available Power BI templates, I'll select Clash Detection Template. And the following steps are very, very simple. Choose to which project and project version will link exported Power BI report. It's again recognized by name, but anytime you can override it and specify your project revision. And the option auto load will automatically load all model sources in Power BI report. Filter option allows us to filter which information, in this case clash results, will be re exported. For entire project, only for selected or only for visible elements. This allows us even more specific and tailored report meant and suitable only for specific stakeholders. It means that you can just export part of, let's say, uh, 3D elements of specific building story or just for one building and only information or, in this case, clash detection analysis for that specific part of the building will be exported and published to Power BI report. When we select location, for saving the Power BI template, the system will create PBIX file and it will also export all relevant information into separate Excel and JSON files used to feed that Power BI template. The next steps are quite simple. Open the Power BI template file and feed it with exported data using refresh option. To see the model, just follow the instruction from this window and publish the report to Power BI online service and choose cloud location 
where exported Power BI uh, report will be published. Once the report is published, this is the final report based on the available template without any modifications and it's very easy and flexi flexible to review results in this way. We can organize clash results per building story or priority for example. Using this option we can isolate only filtered elements in viewer and the results can be filtered all also by category of uh, 3D elements involved in the collision or by for example different clash jobs uh, as per a uh, clash detection matrix which is used to create all these uh, clash jobs. For example, HVAC ducts and concrete beams. While the filter for building stories is still on, so we can see collisions only for third, uh, let's say, story of the building. Using additional, let's say, filtering option, we can see it on a second or for all stories of the building. Another example is to review collisions of water pipes and structural walls, so we can expect if this requires additional care during installation. Similar thing can be found if we search for clashes of suspended ceilings and HVAC equipment, as you might see right now. And using, for example, this clash distance slider, we could identify slight collisions or where elements fully penetrate each other by changing this uh, value for um, uh, collision distance or collision penetration. If the clash analysis are performed progressively during several months, all results can be progressively published into multiple versions of reports and also incrementally saved using our Portfolio Manager application that can be used for overall analytics and project comparisons in specific time frame for example, for a multiple projects or for one project through entire, uh, let's say, design process. This is still a report which is currently available on the Power BI account of the publisher. But if you want to share this report with other participants on the same project, we can simply use the option to publish report to web and make it public. And using provided link, this report can be shared with other team members. On top of that, we can add this link in the form of embedded report in our Common Data Environment project. Now you can see in the list of available projects and revisions in our Common Data Environment platform that this sample project has new released or new published version, which is uploaded by myself during this presentation, and I will open it to add clash detection report to it using add new report option by adding this link it's permanently available from this uh, common data environment project even if a project is missing some required properties we can use available feature to automate the process of adding new properties or their values within bexel manager and all properties no matter if they're original or added can be published to Common Data Environment or exported into Power BI reports. This allows us to use available Power BI templates and customize them to cover different aspects of datasets and analyze different information such as areas, quantities, or any other important information which is project specific or defined by user or the client. This is another sample project of two towers. The same is already available for download from our user area. The project contains rooms as model elements and to these elements we added some additional information that can be used for a different grouping of these elements. In this case, for area analysis report, we'll export available area analysis Power BI template. And again, as in previous example, will match it to the available Common Data Environment project and export all custom breakdowns. We need to specify name, of course, and location where the Power BI template file will be saved. And once we save it, the system takes some time to export Power BI template based on size and 
number of the elements and properties that you are actually exporting from the project. In the list of the properties of the project, I can show you some of the added uh, area information or properties which are added to the spaces. These are, for example, department, number, occupants, a type name, uh, wall and floor finish, and so on. Once the data is loaded using refresh button, you can see the look of default Power BI template for area analysis. We have CBS filters in the, in the corner, in the left corner, and in the right side overall quantities of rooms organized by buildings, building stories, and names. In the bottom area, uh, we have area and volume of each room organized by building story, and in the middle, areas of available spaces grouped by types. Each of these visuals can be easily edited using available and organized information and properties exported from Bexel Manager previously. In case that some of the existing properties are not visible in this list here, you can always use the Transform Data option and try to find and add more properties to the list. Using this tool, we are accessing to the database of information exported from Excel Manager and from the properties list we can choose more properties and in this window simply search and check mark all additional properties we want to add to Power BI. I am familiar with the project so I can easily find all necessary properties and check them. In your case I would always advise you to be familiar with the BIM execution plan and the list of required properties for your project. These now added properties in from the list can be easily added to the table that we want to include it in just by drag and dropping from the list into specific visual visualization of that table. In this case because these are values for wall finish and uh, floor finish this will be added into values group. Since we added new information, this table could be uh, a little bit uh, altered or changed because we want to fit all information to be instantly visible so we can easily shrink these columns and make information visible. In the left corner, for color schema, we can use and change all ad available uh, custom breakdowns, which we used and exported for color coding elements according to the same colors we used in the Bexel Manager. In the lower part of this template, we could even decide to change or delete some of available uh, filters for filtering the elements based on different properties. And in this case, I will just use uh, rooms and building stories for filtering so these tables can be easily changed we can shrink their size move their location and if this is fine if, the, if we are let's say satisfied with the visual of this template we could save it or just before we finish maybe decide to instead of using room volume which is usually not really important information we could switch it to some more important information, for example, area, based on different types of the rooms. We used occupancy and department property. So by specifying or drag and dropping department and occupancy properties into respective visual location, in this case, we want to specify occupancy into y-axis and and department as a legend so now since we changed information we want to rename this table and it's quite simple just by going to general information for this visual title and change the text once we satisfied we can just publish this power bi template in the viewer we can play with the perspective and turn on or off isometric view and by doing this, spaces can be reviewed in a similar manner as designers would usually do in design process. 
in a combination with the custom breakdowns, in this case set by apartment size, it's very easy to check where specific rooms are located and what is their size. Using one more filter we can find only, for example, five room apartments in the 21st story. This kind of review is very useful for investors, for example, so they can check if design team complied to requirements related to room areas, their disposition and quantity. If the filter is changed, for example, to room types, this provides another insight of apartments typology that can be combined with the plan drawings for interactive sales and marketing materials, for example. So we can simply find and isolate specific apartment type on various building stories. At the same time, in the right table, we can see all rooms in that apartment type, their area and respective wall and floor finish material. Using the size filter, we can then check apartment size by number of rooms. And these are all gives us insight and flexibility to review and analyze different aspects of design and area that actually can be, cannot be achieved anywhere else. This project, for example, is a little bit different type of structure or construction. And in this example, you can see one of the power stations, which is also exported into Power BI report for area analysis. The look of this template is slightly different since it's not a residential building and areas are not meant for sale. But in this case, different aspects of areas were important and they were presented simply by using various custom breakdowns and colored according their values respectively. The third example will be an infrastructure project. And this is another demo project that you can download from our user area. It's done in a different language, so the properties have very specific names. What is also typical for almost all infrastructure projects is that all 3D elements are IFC building element proxies or generic elements, so we can't use categories to organize them. In this case, I will export model export Explorer Power BI report with cost. And a small tip for all of you is that model Explorer Power BI without cost can be always exported for any BIM project without any additional work, and it will already contain all properties that your BIM elements have. Again, the same procedure for export, match Power BI with Common Data Environment Project version, and in this case, select cost version to export and created custom breakdowns for color coding. This Power BI file will be named properties, and after a few seconds, when it's published, we can open Power BI and refresh the data to populate the latest information. To add cost information, we need to select cost version in the left upper corner and all tables with cost data are updated instantly. From loaded custom breakdowns, we can select one for initial color coding. And as I mentioned earlier, since this is a really specific project, we need to adjust the template so we could see all these properties from diff different language. Also, if we decide to even remove cost data, for example, and present just quantity information, we can simply delete all unnecessary tables or change their data. Since this is an infrastructure project, a filter for buildings and stories is, is also redundant, and the same goes to the total cost indicator in this specific example. Even though the cost information are usually something that we really don't want to remove, we actually want to show it if we have it. These available visuals for cost item breakdowns and classification could be useful, so we can rearrange them and relocate to make this design more useful. So once we are satisfied with the position 
and the size of these tables, we could start editing the data. As you may see, the right table shows only information about number of elements, so we need to change its data in the same way as we did in a previous example. Before that, we could also delete some of already used properties for grouping 3D elements based on buildings, categories, and building stories, because in this project we actually don't have different buildings or stories, because this is infrastructure project, and also all elements are generic. So now we could add these properties that we want to. Click on the table, use Transform Data Tool, and then find Properties and choose Properties in the Query Settings window. From the list of exported properties, we need to add all properties that we want to use in the Power BI report. In this case, these are all German properties used for quantities. Then we can start adding these properties instead of default ones used initially in the template. Since this project doesn't have different model elements, for grouping we could use property construction works add it to each element in the BIM model and we could also use a two additional properties for component type and property groups which are also added to 3D elements. For German quantity properties used for quantity calculation we need to put them in the value section instead of English properties that in this case doesn't exist in the project. We'll remove these English ones and add existing German properties. Once, for example, the length property is added, you may see that the quantities are not accurate. And if you try to adjust the property using right mouse click here, it doesn't allow us to use summarize function. So to repair this, we need to go to the column tools and change data type for this length property. Instead of default text data type, choose decimal number. In format section, select also decimal number, and the data is already changed. To make sure that summary is calculated, we could right-click on it and select summary function. If you want to change the name of this property in the table, we can simply use this small arrow next to the property name and select option rename for this visual. Type element length is in meters, so the name will be changed for this table in the upper right corner. The same process can be repeated for more properties such as pipe length, for example. Again, change its type from text to decimal number, format to decimal number, and summarize values. Now, a few steps forward, when we added and changed all properties, we can save our modified template and use it for the same or similar projects. Next time when we publish Power BI report, instead of using export template, we can simply choose export data and save it. The process is the same, select common data environment project version. In this case, choose Bexel Manager version for which you modified and saved template that we prepared pre previously. Once the cost version and custom breakdowns are selected, instead of location of Power BI X file, we need to specify location of the folder that will store our exported data. It will create a new folder and the common location for it is the program data Bexel Be Building Explorer 5 where all exported Power BI data is saved. Once the export process is finished, the easiest way to make everything work is to simply copy this temp folder from exported one and paste it to the Building Explorer 5 folder instead of existing temp folder that always keeps the last exported data from any project. Once we did it, we can go back and open previously changed and saved Power BI template and simply use the refresh button again to load the latest exported data from this temp folder. Now when the report is updated, we can publish it online 
and explore it with Embedded 3D Viewer. This quantity takeoff infrastructure report can be organized by work groups and now it's easy to explore quantities of different work groups such as noise protection, pipes and different work groups that are relevant and important for construction purposes. Another way to explore quantity and information related to location and probably information related to schedule is by changes or axes where the quantities for each project part is differently color coded for example by railway or road or for the bridge. I hope that this gives you idea how you can use and work with these simple but really powerful Power BI reports and now I will hand over to my colleague Alexander to walk you through workflows and reports related to schedule, cost estimation and progress tracking. Thank you Mileta. Now we're continuing to 5D workflows. So as we mentioned before and as we mentioned in a series of webinars that were dedicated to workflows in Vexa Manager, automation is key in managing and producing large amount of data. So also in 5D cost management, using Vexel Manager automated workflows, you have ability to, in a pretty streamlined way, uh, create cost classifications out of BIM data. And we have numerous webinars explaining these workflows that will be linked in the description of this video as well. Uh, and today we will focus on the results, we will focus on the data set that is exported and that could be presented and tailored fit to purpose for a certain participant. So this is our typical 5D estimation dashboard that allows you to fit for purpose data that you want to send to a certain participant. So you have ability since data is very well structured and very well organized you have ability to very easily focus on the portion of data that is relevant for a specific user so in this case you have to focus on a one single story on a one single group of cost items uh, one single subcontractor if needed so the point is the data is well organized data is well structured you have ability to cross reference different data uh, sets you have ability to uh, I would say sort and organize the data, data according to different parameters and you have ability to easily navigate and to easily trace the source of data so the traceability is the key you have ability to uh, visualize actually where the data is in the model and vice versa from the model to determine which data is linked to that specific model. To understand flexibility of the database that is produced by Bexel Manager Automated Workflows, we have to go not in the published dashboard, but in the desktop Power BI des uh, dashboard to see and to inspect the data set and to see how it could be customized. So, for example, the table that is showing us the cost items and uh, Cost classification uh, and classification items uh, with the resources, uh, equipment, labor, material, and all the statistics that we have seen on the, on the published report could be altered very easily in the published Power BI template. So, for instance, we have ability here to choose and to change uh, parent levels in our classification and to get completely different structure, a differently organized. Uh, uh, cost classification in this case uh, we have ability to remove or to add columns from the from the database uh, from, from the table um, we have a very well organized uh, data sources uh, where we can simply go and get any data that we need so for instance let's return parent level let's see two parent level three just for example just to show you how this affects your visuals and how this affects your in this case 5d estimation dashboard 
and how you can actually manipulate with this uh, with this data so in this case let's say we're just uh, sorting cost information by story of the elements so we are combining uh, different data sets data domains from the properties and uh, assigned items um, as well as elements so we have all these different data domains that we can use and modify and combine to tailor our data output to a specific phase of the project or to a specific project user Integrated 4D, 5D construction planning module gives you even broader perspective in utilizing your data in the right way or the right purpose on the project. So those of you who already uh, participated in our free web webinars are already familiar with our intelligent scheduling engine and highly automated process of creating a schedule on the project and uh, defining schedule logic that could be uh, changed with other users on other projects and reused and updated over and over. Um, those of you that, that haven't, please uh, go and check those, uh, those useful webinars. But uh, again, today we will focus on what is the product of this automated process, the amount of information that is captured from the planner's expertise and also from the progress tracking database as well. So once we have our 4D, 5D data integrated and we have our progress data uh, using our open API system, we have ability to additionally reach model automatically with some key project indicators like cost performance index, schedule performance index to color code it, publish it to the cloud, and to visualize it on the cloud as well. And of course, we have ability to export all of this into form of uh, earned value analysis, where we can further check the connection between our data domains and our 3D model, including also key project indicators that we were able to get automatically from our Excel Manager database. So you can see that you can, again, very easily, very freely navigate uh, through data domains. You have ability to very easily visualize the progress, in this case, progress of this uh, specific project. Uh, you see uh, very clear um, key project indicators, like actual cost, earned value cost, planned value cost, uh, or important uh, schedule variance, schedule uh, performance index, cost performance index, metrics. Uh, you have ability, again, to organize and to visualize the data or cost performance index, let's say, color coded so that you can very easily identify those areas in the project where you have lower productivity or higher productivity, uh, where you have ability to see exactly on which tasks, on which uh, subcontractors, on which uh, construction teams, you have issues and why those issues appear so that you have informed decision-making process based on the realistic data that is just in time delivered to you so that you have the clear picture where your product is, uh, where your project is at every moment uh, of time. Uh, also using API script and uh, Excel CD, you have ability even visualize in terms of animation your project directly in your dashboard so not only that you can track the data trace the data to the smallest uh, element in your model you also have ability to visualize the animation in the dashboard itself and of course to allow other people that are not using Pixel Matter expert platform to use the functionality so for visualizing the the progress of your project uh, next to the uh, performance indicators of your project. And um, um, again, as in previous cases, uh, this is just one of the standardized dashboards that is available directly as, a, as an export from Excel Manager. But we will also go deeper into, uh, into this template 
and see what are the possibilities for customization and what are the possibilities for tailoring, changing, and reorganizing this incredible uh, rich data source according to your needs and according to the specifics of your project. So as in previous case, backbone of this interactive dashboard is again, very well organized, uh, very well structured database that gives you a range of parameters, key product indicators from the project that allows you to change and customize the data that you see. So, for example, in this case, we have a total cost, baseline cost, earn value cost organized by task levels. That means by the structure of the schedule, uh, we have ability to change this in a few clicks. Basically, we always have ability to change the, the parent levels to the cost classification levels. For instance, uh, we have ability again to change and to move certain parameters, to reorganize it. Of course, appearance is also uh, very easily adjustable according to your personal references. And um, everything is open for customization. Everything is open for personalization. And everything is ready for use according to your specific needs and preferences. Another important workflow when we're talking about 4D and 5D information on BIM model is BIM progress monitoring. And again, in a series of webinars, we were touching the process of BIM progress monitoring uh, using communication with open uh, BCF formats. And uh, also we now have the selection set exchange between Bexel Cloud platforms and Bexel Manager, where user is able using the data sets that we have just explored to send to construction site look ahead plans so again slice the data in the proper package for the proper users on the construction site let's say look ahead plan for for the next week or for the next month where the users are not and this is very important they are not piled up with the unnecessary information that is not related to their narrowly uh, defined tasks so you can very easily fit the data for the purpose of a certain, let's say, subcontractor on the construction site. Uh, data is presented in a very intuitive graphical way so that you can understand the data and that you can utilize it. And then again, the people on construction site are able to return back to update. So from the look at a look ahead plan to update the actual data and to return it back to the Mixon Manager application to be uh, uploaded to the uh, actual schedule. And uh, then, of course, with the update schedule, you get all the relevant metrics, uh, some of which we were using in the, in the previous uh, explanation. Uh, but now we're going to focus on one more dashboard that is relevant for this phase of the project, for the execution phase, and that is a payment certificate dashboard that automatically gives the opportunity to export data about executed works uh, organized by subcontractor, organized by, by uh, cost items, and organized by the periods of execution, but we will uh, see it closely in this dashboard. So from our common data environment, we can easily navigate to our dashboard and here we can again as in previous cases first visualize and color code the model according to any data set that we have in our model uh, we can navigate through the list of uh, monthly certificates uh, that is organized in this case by uh, cost classification levels it could be also organized by, uh, by schedule or any other uh, data reference that you actually have in your model. Um, again, you have very easy access uh, to different slicers, to different sorting and filtering options so that you can navigate to the narrow slice of data that you actually need. So for instance, if you need a monthly certificate for a certain subcontractor, you just need to, to find all the cost items that are relevant for that specific subcontractor, you're going to see exactly what is the 
accumulated uh, uh, quantity and cost for previous months, what is executed in, in uh, certification period, what is uh, uh, balanced to finish. You can again cross-reference that data or with the data of other subcontractors. Uh, you have ability to cross-reference this monthly certificate data with the key project indicators like schedule performance index, cost performance index. So basically in one report, not only to see what are the real costs and what are the monthly certifications that you, let's say as an investor, uh, have to pay to a certain subcontractors, but also to measure their performance comparing to uh, their uh, claims and their, uh, their, their monthly certificates. Uh, you can see how, how behind or how ahead of, of the planned schedule they were. Um, so in this uh, uh, particular case, you can see that uh, in general, schedule performance index was pretty bad at the beginning of the project and it was improving uh, basically around the, the, the middle of this, of this main axis, uh, which shows a good trend in this specific case, um, especially for let's say excavation specialist, where you can see how they struggled at the beginning with their productivity, but then they improved with the, with the positive um, with the positive trend towards the end, and that you have ability to pinpoint basically every cost item in the project and to check all of these performances and to compare them with the performances of other teams. Now, again, even here uh, you have ability to animate your model which could be helpful again with all of this information. Uh, you have just a better picture uh, how your project was executed, where you are at the moment. Uh, you can very easily visualize uh, key indicators of the quality of the work. You can very easily navigate and check the performances of different uh, project participants. And the most important thing is you can have clear picture what is happening on the project in every moment and you can further send this information to other relevant uh, people that are involved in the, in the construction process to uh, again make their decisions and their changes based on the relevant data that is uh, accurate and that is verifiable. Of course besides the, the dashboard itself and the database that is the basis for the, for the dashboard. An uh, important part of this uh, system is also Bexel Common Data Environment, which allows you to publish data and the model cloud and to share it with other participants, where you have ability to uh, manage the user access for different users and to define their roles, where you have ability to navigate through the different revisions of your project and open them, um, delete them and manage them. We have ability to access to any of these revisions. And you have ability again to just load the part of the project that is relevant for you. So you are not uh, binded to, to load everything if you don't need. So you can focus to the part of the project that is relevant for you as, a, as an actor on the project. We have a huge part of these relevant informations uh, that are contained in the dashboards, also here in the viewer, where you have ability to see and navigate and to visualize all this necessary information. Also important new feature is uh, property search. And in this case, you can go and search through your property information, even some custom project properties, like for instance, information relevant for the for this specific infrastructure project, where you can easily again isolate the elements that are for instance just uh, part of this main railway line. You have ability to quickly select all the elements with a certain property value, then you can go and subdivide the project by some other uh, important properties, like let's say uh, component group in this case. So you can just 
restrict the visible properties to selected elements only and then from the selected elements you can just find the next important parameter and combine add intersect or subtract from, from selection so let's say we want to intersect it and just visualize isolate the elements that are relevant to us again those elements are color coded by the custom breakdowns that were exported directly from Bexel Manager. And of course, all of this information is available in the dashboards itself that we have already seen in our previous presentations. So, so now my colleague Millet and I have covered different dashboards that are relevant for different phases of the project, for different uh, automated integrated workflows in, 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 in BIM. But and most of these are standard dashboards that have their own specific customizations based from the project to project. But generally, those are standard dashboards with the standard data sets that could be used, we can say, widely in the industry on different projects. But what I want to um, shed light additionally uh, in this last part of today's session is custom data sets this means that data set from b model should not just be the standardized data set that is used for some standardized key performance indicators well, let's say like casual performance index cost performance of of course those are important and you need to manage them properly but for specific groups of projects in specific situations, you sometimes need some custom data that are specific for some discipline, for some um, technology of execution, for some specific group of projects. And you need to reinterpret maybe even some standardized data in a different way in order to uh, track uh, properly your, your project. So, in this case, uh, I want to show you one. Uh, specific infrastructure project where uh, we need to reinterpret progress data in a linear schedule manner. What that means? That means that we don't want to visualize schedule in a Gantt chart or line of balance view, but we want to visualize activities as a function of change of the project and date of execution. So that is the way we want to visualize it and that was the request from the project and again we were using custom data set that is specific for the, this uh, this model that gives us information about the start change change and change of every element on the project that gives us information about the activities on every element on the project and with using that data and utilizing them through excel manager exported database and Power BI as a tool for visualization of data, we were able to very easily create this dashboard that gives us uh, exactly information we want. So it gives us something that is out of standardized uh, data set, something that is not typical, some, something that is not uh, easily achievable in the user interface of the software because it is specific for the certain project, for certain technology of execution. But uh, since our database is uh, uh, more than enough open for working and changing and customizing, we were able to just reuse it and to, to, to customize it in a way we want and visualize it in a way that is completely specific for this type of the project. Again, here, as in previous cases, you have uh, all the other uh, functionalities of Bexel CD system where you have ability to very easily correlate model elements and the visualized charts of the data when you have ability to visualize animation where you have ability again to navigate and slice the data into packages that are relevant for for certain purpose for a certain period of time uh, or for certain relevant uh, participant on the project linear schedule data is not limited to the one specific dashboard. So with the same data set, we were able to 
experiment to 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 create different approaches different views uh, different visualizations in this case you can visualize activities for uh, main axis um, superstructure so bedding rail and threshold and you can clearly see um, how the sections are uh, actually rendered in the, in the chart showing change and uh, date of execution uh, here you see the same chart just that is um, color coded by planned versus actual deviation so here for the earthworks in the main axis you can see that uh, deviation between planned and actual was uh, more or less close to zero at the beginning of the project and then it increased towards the end so going from green to red so again shows you a clear a uh, picture of delays let's say in this case and now you see the same data visualized with a different chart showing for every uh, change of the project exact deviation um, between plan and actual um, here you can see that you can control let's say one of the parameters and that is change that is a distance from the from the from uh, uh, zero on the axis and see how it reflects in your 3d model uh, this is the same set of data just this time with you with um, productivity deviations so how the productivity how the number of executed meters per day changed throughout time so you can clearly see that only the, the part of the project that is already built has this data mapped up to the status date and here you can go and navigate to a very specific section of the railway and see the exact values and color coding for those specific sections. As in all previous examples, here as well, the data set comes from Bexel Manager Central BIM model. Uh, we have scheduled data, we have uh, progress entries, uh, we have API to enrich our model elements with the information from 4d and 5d and now we can just simply export the data layer so only the data not the template because the template is in this case custom template created for a customized specific purpose and not uh, one of the many built-in templates that we have within vexel manager and in our custom or bi template we're going to just refresh the data to get the information, the updated information from Central BIM model that we're going to use to, to, to work on and customize it further. The, the heart of everything is open and well organized data source. So if we go to transform data, we can see exactly how the data source exported from Bexel Manager model looks like. And we can see that this data could be further customized by the user. So in this case, we're talking about the properties of the model where we have ability to choose custom specific properties that we need for that specific project or that specific use case. The next step that is in development that will be available in June this year and will be presented in the next webinar is the option to export custom properties directly from Excel Manager. At the moment, we're exporting complete data set and then the user is able to just pick the data set it needs. So you can see that all of these properties are available and that we are able to now, for instance, in this case, color code our chart using different properties. It was color coded by the, by the activity now we want to color code it by actual axial productivity rates so we're going to use gradient and we're going to set up the values from red as the lowest value of zero meters of productivity per day uh, we're going to set yeah we're going to set it to zero uh, then the middle value which will be 20 meters per day and we're going to mark it later with yellow and uh, um, the maximum value which is in our project uh, and, and that is something that we have checked in the in the model around 45 so based on this specific property this specific data we can 
map very clearly all the works that were already executed, so all the completed works. Uh, we can match the same color coding information in our CDE model. So when we publish this report, we're going to see the same color coding mapped on our model elements as we see in the chart. And if you if you can see, um, as you can see, when we when we filter groups of works and the works itself, we can again see clearly the picture of uh, how the what is the actual productivity on the project uh, as shown in meters per day of the progress. Next example is a bit different from what we have seen today and it pushes the limits of classical BIM model. But we were using it to test versatility of this approach and to see how robust the system is. So this is a BIM model of International Space Station that we have enriched with data available in open sources and Wikipedia and NASA website. And we got small but decent data set for every module of the space station. And based on this, uh, we have uh, created different custom breakdown structures uh, and um, color coding views that we want to export, including with the data set that uh, we have we have added and reaching this basic model. We wanted to publish it to CD and to try to create interactive dashboard that will uh, present the data in the best way using BIM technologies. So model is published to CD, including all the data sets that we added using the attendance process, including all the custom breakdowns and selection sets that were present in the BIM model. Uh, we have ability to navigate using all of this information easily through the model. We have ability to color code it using the, the uh, custom breakdown structures that we created in Bexel Major. Uh, we have ability to simulate even assembly sequence since we have the launch dates uh, for for every every uh, module of the space station in this case. So using the animation functionality, we have ability even to simulate animation and even to color code it differently and to see basically with the legend uh, by name, every module and how it was assembled. The data set is going to be again a standardized model explorer data set and we're going to export only data in this case as well because we have custom template it was created by deleting and modifying some of the visuals in the existing built-in model explorer template then first we're going to refresh the empty template to get the data that was exported from the model and then we're going to publish it to the cloud so this is a process where we publish Power BI template to a Power BI online platform and then to additionally embed it or to publish it as a web link or we're going to log in into Bexel Viewer Visual and now we can use our dashboard. In the dashboard itself, again, uh, we have ability to, to uh, organize and to subset the information using any property that was added during data enrichment process. Uh, we can navigate from module to module. We can navigate by agency. We can navigate by the launch vehicles. And we can just cross-reference all different information uh, from all different domains and to check the information uh, that is relevant for, in this case, our model. So including the mission codes, including the, the launch vehicles, number of launches, and all of different relevant information for this specific model. Uh, here we have uh, the slight modification of the same dashboard that also has the launch schedule, which means that besides all the relevant information, we also plotted the information about the different uh, stages of the ISS assembly 
and their uh, time of launch. And this is an interesting example that if we check, let's say, a space shuttle as a launch vehicle type, that we have a clear picture of how the three different vehicles were used with the alter alternate launches of three vehicles due to a uh, need for the, for the preparations uh, and repairs. And you can also see a typical, uh, uh, this four year gap in launches that happened in 2003, from 2003 to 2004, after Space Shuttle Challengers, Challengers disaster. So the real data plotted in a very simple way uh, through the, through the, through the uh, BIM management tool and utilized using Power BI dashboard. Again, in the dashboard, we are also able to simulate the animation as well as we did in, in uh, um, CD system. We also have ability to check, let's say, launch vehicles, which are not permanent modules of the station, but also represent important part of its functioning. Uh, as in previous uh, examples, the last one for today also contains good, well-organized data set that could be customized according to the needs of the user. So you can see that here again, we have ability to pick up the properties that are present in our B model and to utilize them in the best possible way to present it and to organize the board uh, in order to present the real data from our project. So in this example, what we're going to try to do, we will try to uh, use this uh, pie chart and to change it to show uh, launch vehicle types and the number of modules uh, launched by every different vehicle type, let's say. So with the simple drag and drop, of, uh, of properties, uh, we can change this. Uh, now we can just switch from number of uh, launch modules to number of launches, because in some of the launches we had multiple modules at once uh, assembled with the station. Um, so we're, we can switch from vehicle type to the vehicle itself. So we're gonna have more values and we can compare uh, which vehicle actually launch, uh, which, uh, 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 how many modules, uh, we can just see the same metric with the mass and see uh, which launch vehicle, in this case, launched um, more in terms of mass. We can compare between different launch vehicles and see directly uh, the summary of the, of, the, of the tonnage that was actually launched into space. So again, something that is completely out of the um, construction as an industry in general, but also very similar with the logic when it comes to managing the data, and that could be utilized through the management software because it uses the same data structured in a proper way that could be then utilized and shown uh, fit to purpose, I would say, for every specific project, including the one that is complete, completely out of the limits of, of, of the, an ordinary um, construction project. And that would be all from today's practical examples demonstration. Um, at the end, I just want to uh, inform you that we are scheduling our next webinar in series uh, for June 21st at the same time as today's webinar, where we're going to cover some uh, updates on this topic. Uh, uh, we're going to go uh, deeper into some uh, other uh, built-in dashboards. Uh, uh, we're going to show uh, comparing two cost classifications in Power BI. Uh, we're going to cover progress dashboards uh, with two integrated viewers, planned versus actual uh, analysis, and, and uh, some uh, additional functionalities in Bexel Viewer and Bexel CD. That would be all for today. At the end, I just want one more time to thank you all for joining us 
uh, today for this webinar. I hope that you find this topic interesting and I hope you're going to uh, join us on the next webinar as well as the following webinars after that. Um, for the end, just to say that uh, uh, some of the dashboards that you have seen today will be added later as publicly available links. So published dashboards with integrated viewer will be available as uh, as public links uh, in the description of this webinar uh, shortly after after we complete this day. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a nice day.